Before we start this video, a large thank you to Jason, Nicholas, and Yuki for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody, today we're going to make it so the other character in our game can't change the owner's UI. So you can see here I'm actually joining on another client. Um, and if I walk over and change my weapon, the sword doesn't have an icon, so there's nothing there for that. But yeah, the bow, you can see it, it's actually changing my icon on the host. Also, if I swing, you can see that the stamina bar drains on my end. I can't hit the character because we're on the same team. But yeah, so that's a problem. Uh, so we're going to address that. We're going to make it so our UI only uh, changes with the owner. So let's start by looking at the UI manager. And you can see we have a player variable, and maybe it would help if we figured out what we're calling that. So I'm just going to investigate that real quick. Uh, we're calling it on set stat bars UI. We're giving the player over, but I think we're only calling this on a function that says if we are the owner. So that's not the problem. Let's go to the player manager and delete the UI manager variable, mostly because it's a singleton. We don't need it there anymore. That's kind of old code. But also now it will give us a hint as to where this is happening, because if I save this, we're going to need a bunch of errors, and uh, that should help guide us towards the problem. So you can see this already is an instance, so let's go over now and save this because wherever we call that, we're now going to get an error. So right here, low weapon on slot, yes, this is our pro this is problem number one. Um, we're, we should put this line of code here in the owner check. And also, um, we need to make sure we call a singleton now, so we just say UI manager instance. And we want to keep this uh, here because we're loading weapons every time we switch on both ends, but we only want to call the portion where we're changing the UI on the owner's end. Uh, much like where we change the weapon IDs there, that has to be on the owner's end as well. So just again, put the UI element here where we already have the owner check and make sure you're referencing the singleton now. I think we have like six or seven of these, so that'll get rid of the bulk of the errors and hopefully the last couple will lead us to the other problems we have. So again, basically if you have a function that's being called on both the, um, the player and the client that's connected to their player's game, you want to make it so if there's any functionality that edits the UI, since there is only one UI in the game, you want to do an owner check and make sure that, that portion only happens for the owner. Load weapon happens on both ends, because if I switch a weapon on my end, then I call a server RPC, and this function gets called on your end as well. So we don't want me switching your UI, basically. Uh, now, this bonfire one is your choice. If you want it so your friendly phantoms can activate bonfires, and you want it so, if, if they can activate bonfires, then obviously you want to give the host a pop-up saying, hey, a bonfire has been activated. So if a friendly phantom does activate a bonfire, you want to notify the host. You want to actually allow this pop-up on both ends. So I'm just going to make a comment here saying that if you want non-owners to see a pop-up, then keep this here. Um, in Nephilim, I have it so my cooperators can activate checkpoints. And if they do, the host gets a pop-up notifying them that, hey, they've activated a checkpoint. That's by design. So just entirely your choice. Dark Souls doesn't even let you activate a bonfire, I don't think, if you're a phantom, so you might want to remove that. Um, so here on the is interact, this is for the level up uh, interactable. We want to make a check for the owner. Uh, this shouldn't be a problem because you should only be processing interactables uh, as an owner anyway, but just in case, we'll put this here. But again, this should not be a problem at all because in the future, we're only going to make it so the interactable process is on your side, your side only. So let's apply that and save it. For things like opening doors and levers, we use the server RPC, so that's a bit different. Uh, so here on the aim action, this one's definitely going to be processed because actions are processed. Let's do a check, and we're going to say, if you are the owner, activate your um, crosshair. We're also going to do archery in the next episode, by the way. We're going to sync firing arrows. That one's going to be a lot of fun. So let's put this in here like so. That looks good. Cool. And let's reference the singleton. Yes, yeah, so the next two episodes will be archery uh, and then syncing magic projectiles. And then we're going to see where we're at from there. So let's go over here now, and again, anything on the on the input handler, you shouldn't need to do a check for. No, not shouldn't, you don't need to do a check for, because inputs are solely on uh, the owner's side only, so nothing that's run in here is going to run on both um, both players' characters' bases, what I'm trying to say. So you don't need to do a check there for his owner. So I am going to change, though, every single error here to basically a... UI singleton call instead of the player.ui manager because there only is one UI manager so we can just use our singleton and get good use out of that. I'm going to save that and then I'm going to go over to the level up screen again. This should never be called from anywhere else so you don't need to check for an owner here. This is just a strictly localized thing. So now if I join the game you can see that as I'm switching weapons over here on the client when I do it momentarily. So I, yeah I still drain the stamina but the weapons are definitely synced now. 
So I'm not, I'm not editing stamina. So that was a light attack, and there's nothing here. But if we go to the light attack animation, you can see there's an there's a animation right here called Train Stamina. There it is, Train Stamina on Attack. So that, I think, is on the Player Combat Manager. And if we go down here, e yes, you can see our problem. We're deducting stamina on this animation event. And since this animation event is called every time someone swings a sword, it's actually editing our stamina. So what you want to do on the duck stamina is just make a check for if his owner. Now, alternatively, you can just basically uh, go to the base source of this and only drain stamina in any regard if you are the owner instead of just changing or checking for the UI update. It's all the same, really. It doesn't really matter where you choose to handle it. You might want to choose to handle it from different places or different reasons. I'm just going to go and wherever we find the UI element, I'm going to say this because in the future, um, you don't need to make the the variables that are only being measured on your end, you don't need to make them network variables, you can. For example, take armor absorptions. The enemy never needs to know my armor class, it's only when they hit me, and then on my end, I calculate the damage of my armor class, and then spit back out my total HP. Like, they don't need to know it, you can allow them to know it by making a network variable if you want some interaction where they need to know your armor percentage. What I'm trying to say is not everything needs to be a network variable. Um, so I'm just going to go to wherever I'm editing the UI here now, and I'm just going to check for ownership. And that is the way I'm going to do this moving forward. Basically, if there's ever a function that's ran on both ends and it modifies the UI, I'm just going to simply make sure that only the owner can modify the UI because obviously the owner of the game is the one who's using that UI. Well, that's it. Just going to keep it simple. Not going to overcomplicate it. So again, uh, take damage no animation. Uh, there's a, a health bar update here. Just going to make sure that we're checking for is owner. Just in case that's on an animation event, I don't think it is. Actually, yes, it is. It's on a critical uh, damage step animation event where we apply our critical damage. So that one's there too. Take poison damage, gonna do the same thing. There we go. And that should be fine now, I think. Let's see. Uh, yeah, because this top one where we're initializing the UI, this is this function is actually being checked by an if his owner event. This is the downside to adding multiplayer partway through a project and why a lot of people won't touch it. It's uh, it can get very complicated, so we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. So, where we are regenerating stamina, I'm just going to have this whole function as a whole only be ran after the owner, because again, we don't need to keep track of the enemy stamina. Unless you want to for some specific reason you're thinking of, then by all means do it. Your game is probably not like mine, it might be entirely different. That's cool. So, this heal character is also on an animation event on one, I believe, so I'm going to check for an is owner, or if is owner here. Um, it's also called on a healing collider. Um, deduct focus points, so yeah, we're going to put that if is owner as well. Um, I'm not sure if we've already done that, I don't think we have yet, but focus points should be a network variable if you want it to be. Um, if you're never checking it again for the other person's focus points, it doesn't need to be. Uh, so yeah, now I can swing and it's not updating my stamina here on the other end. So the last thing we need to do is, you can see here, some of you might have noticed, I have a canvas group here on my player UI game object. This is because it was basically, you could see my UI in the main menu sometimes. So I made it a canvas group and I set the alpha to zero so you can't see it. What we're gonna do now is go to the UI manager and we're gonna say using unityengine.scene management and we're gonna set it up so whenever we load into the world scene or any scene except for the main menu scene, it's going to basically re-enable our UI so we can see it. So. This is quite simple. Um, all we need to do is make um, an event for this. And when we use on scene change, we're gonna call this event. Now, the event is going to require two variables, one scene for the old scene and one scene for the new scene, otherwise we can't call it. So we're gonna make a private void on scene changed or on scene change. And we're gonna give it two variables, scene, old scene and scene, new scene. And this is really simple. All you want to do is check and we're going to say if the new scene build index is equal to, in my case, it's zero, um, which is basically whatever the build index is of your main menu scene, then we set the alpha to zero. Otherwise, we set the canvas alpha to one. So I'm just going to make a comment. If our new scene is our main menu scene, we want to set the alpha of the canvas group to zero so it can't be seen, so it's not overlapping our main menu. Alternatively, too, you could probably just place this behind the UI, but I like doing it this way. So you can get your build index by going to your build here. You can see this, my main menu scene build index is zero. If you want, you can cache that as a variable and reference the variable instead of the raw number. I know some people don't like magic numbers. 
In this case, since it's so simple though, I'm just going to reference the number directly because I know I'm never gonna change my menu scene. Uh, that's just me personally. So I'll make a header for the canvas group. I can drag in the canvas group variable here and then we can reference that. I'm just gonna call it canvas group. And again, I'm just gonna simply say if the build index is zero, canvas group dot alpha is equal to zero. Otherwise, canvas group dot alpha is equal to one, one being full, so it's just fully back and present on the screen. Um, you can use this for some other things too. Let's say you wanna disable the input manager until you're into the world. Maybe you have a character creation screen and you don't want your character running around while they're in their preview, then this is a good place to do it also. So I'm just gonna save that. Okay, so now we go to our prefab and I see that I don't think I have the canvas group on my prefab because I forgot to save my prefab when I added it. So instead of editing my prefab, I'm just going to go to the prefab that I have in my main menu uh, scene and I'm going to drag it in from there and then I'm gonna save this one as the new prefab. And now that should work, so let's test it out. Um, oh, first we have to call this function. So yeah, on start or awake, I like calling my events on start and my initializations on awake, that's just me personally. I'm gonna say scene manager dot on scene changed plus equals and we reference ours on scene changed. Now you would also want to on call this on destroy but since the UI component is never being destroyed there's no worry about memory leak there. It's never ever changing, it's always present. So now we start the game, you can see that the alpha is at zero and if I um, start the game here and go into new game and go to the world, yes, it does change to one. So that is working as intended. All right, guys, sorry I've been a bit more busy lately. I haven't been able to answer a lot of messages as quickly as I'd like to. I've been really, really trying to get something complete with Nephilim, and I've also been really busy with other work stuff, but I should be back to a normal schedule now uh, in the next couple of weeks. And in the next video, we're going to sync our projectiles across the network, and that one's gonna be fun. <laughs> it's gonna be a bit weird because there's several ways we can do this, and I'm gonna show you all the ways you can do this, but I'm gonna show you why I think one way is the best. And then we're gonna sync magic projectiles, which is mostly the same, but because of a few other effects, it's a little bit different too. Um, and then after that, we're going to jump into UI and reactivating them for network. And we're going to get into spawning and despawning them as a network owner and as a host. So if you guys did learn something or you enjoyed the video, a like and a comment is greatly appreciated. I know I sound like a broken record. I'm probably going to sound like a broken record until the series is over. Well, I, I definitely am. Um, but beyond that, guys, I will see you in the next episode where we're going to handle syncing our range projectiles. Take care. Talk soon.